Spice is a member of the class of 2022. She is in the DHS Orchestra where she plays the violin and she is interested in technology and what it is doing to kids your age, pretty much, because of overuse. Please welcome Faiza as she presents the effects of social media and technology on teens and adolescents. Oh, it's not new. Okay. Hi, I want to start by asking a question. How many of you haven't used your phone for more than two weeks willingly and consecutively? None of you? Well, that's really surprising, but I haven't used my phone in more than two weeks because I was using my phone excessively and social media excessively as well. You can probably understand, it's really hard to try to understand a teen away from their phone, or from being able to communicate outside of school, away from using social media, away from Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, or any other type of social media platform. I'm gonna admit, it was extremely hard the, couple of, the first couple of days, but I, like, all I wanted to do was just text and like, go down Instagram or Snapchat people. But after I learned the real effects of technology and how it affects psychology, brain development, and the internal well-being, it's made me rethink how much I really want to let myself have. This brings me to the topic of what I'm talking about today, the effects of social media on adolescents. This is a new culture, and it's a part of us. We're constantly plugged in. There's always been a historical pattern concerning technology and new ways of doing things and learning. We're starting to see the effects of modern technology now more than ever as a whole. It may come to you as a surprise, but the two biggest tech figures in recent history, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, seldom let their kids play on the very products they helped create and didn't even get them a phone until a certain age. In an interview, Bill Gates' wife, Melinda Gates, confirmed that their kids didn't have a smartphone but could only use a family computer in their kitchen until they turned 14. This is really shocking because these are the people who bought smart technology into our homes but are protecting their own children from it. You can probably ask, why was this? Well, their answer was simple, the addictive power of technology. Here you can see a graph, and this shows the rates of the amount of cell phone use from 2012 to 2018. From 2012 to 2018, 48% of more teens had their own smartphones, and 46% were using social media multiple times a day. Researchers are saying that technology is rewiring our brains, how they work, and how we think. Thinking is the capacity to reflect, reason, draw conclusions based on our experiences, knowledge, and insights. Digital dementia, a term coined by top German neuroscientist Manfred Spitzer, is a term used to describe how the overuse of digital technology is resulting in the breakdown of cognitive abilities. In fact, more and more young people who've raised in the digital age are showing signs of short-term memory dysfunction as a result of their addiction to technology. A growing number of children and adults are susceptible to constant connection and overuse of technology damage, and this causes a brain imbalance, where one side is stronger than the other. Damage to the right side of the brain is found with digital dementia, and is associated with deficits in ability to concentrate, short attention span, lack of memory, insomnia, and emotional disturbances, such as anxiety and depression. I think we can all relate to these pictures. We are the first generation in history to be exposed to screens and mobile devices throughout all stages of our physiological development. If any of you have any siblings, cousins, or young children in your family, you can probably relate to the kicking and screaming when you try to take away a phone or an iPad when they're playing a game. This shows the addiction to technology starting at such a young age, like four years old, and social media entering their lives around 10 to 11. This introduces a whole other side. Our brains are amazing at taking in and processing the information, and we're still developing. Being exposed to hidden influences through social media and variety of web rising platforms is affecting the development of our brains early on with our siblings and influencing us in our teen years. In a nationally representative yearly surveys, 8th, 10th, 12th graders psychological well-being measured by self-esteem, life satisfaction, and happiness suddenly decreased after 2012. Adolescents and teens who spend more time on electronic speaking platforms or just technology and screens and less time on non-screen activities had a lower psychological well-being. 
The complex part when trying to understand how or why this is happening is because we don't really know what's actually happening and often don't see it when it's already happened. As someone who was really attached to the use of their phone and the use of social media, I, didn't, I was the last person to see what was actually happening. I was more irritable, I was annoyed easier, I had no patience, and I was just feeling down. Now, the state never went too far. However, many cases, kids, teens, and parents are realizing something is wrong way too late. Okay, this has a further lead onto depression. A study showed that an eighth grader's risk for depression jumps 27% when he or she uses social media. Someone who uses their phone three hours or more a day is more likely to be suicidal. These numbers are driving past homicide with smartphones being the driving force. You might not think that 27% is a lot, but if you think of it as you're on a cliff and you're 27% closer to falling off, that makes a huge difference. Here you can see a graph, and this shows the suicide rates starting from 1994 when there was a really big peak. It started to steadily decrease until 2006 and 2014 when it's been steadily rising. The suicides from social media specifically are generally cases of cyberbullying. Cyberbullies mainly hide just behind their screens and torment their victims, especially by making people feel self-shame, depreciating people's self-values, and crushing their self-love. Research conducted has shown new vitalities concerning technologies and media specifically results in aggression, sexual behavior like meaning for sex or drugs, substance abuse, disordered eating, and academic difficulties. This connects with the research concerning the brain development being influenced early on from early ages from exposure of social influences from media and TV. So what is it now? Well, culture is changing, and technology is becoming a bigger and more important part of our lives. And I believe it's up to us as a new generation to make sure we take charge of our own lives is the way we see fit. I believe taking charge begins with awareness. Aware of all the complexities concerning technology, and I truly believe we can all impact each other's lives for the better. Before I wrap it up, I want to say this is not to say at all that you should give up technology or social media because technology has revolutionized our world and social media has opened up so many new opportunities and changed the way we live. The only thing is that we need to be cognizant as a group and realize the real effects of technology and that it might not be everything. There are steps you can take, such as monitoring your screen time, time to time, or taking a mental break, being aware of the negative effects of the excessive use, and just trying to engage in things other than your phone. I'm not trying to sound patronizing while saying this, but as dreadful as it may sound, taking a small break or just moderating your cell phone use just a little bit can bring you a sense of freedom and help you reconnect with the world. <sighs> Let's try to use technology and social media in moderation because nothing of too much is good. And that's my key to the world. Thank you. Thank you.